DPF is slowly dying and you're probably helping it along without even knowing it. Most diesel owners replace their DPF every 100,000 to 150,000 miles, spending $3,000 to $5,000 each time. But what if I told you there are simple habits that can make your DPF last twice as long, maybe even longer? Today I'm revealing the biggest DPF killers and the surprisingly simple practices that can double your DPF's lifespan. This isn't about expensive additives or complicated maintenance. It's about understanding how your DPF actually works and giving it what it needs to survive. Make sure to watch till the end because I'll show you the single biggest mistake diesel owners make that destroys DPFS in half the time they should last. First, let's understand what's actually killing your DPF. Your DPF is essentially a sophisticated soot trap that captures tiny particles from your diesel exhaust. During regeneration cycles, it burns off this trapped soot at temperatures exceeding 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, turning it into ash that gets blown out the exhaust. But here's the critical problem. Each regeneration cycle leaves behind microscopic ash residue that gradually accumulates and can never be removed. This ash buildup is the natural cause of DPF death. It reduces efficiency, clogs the filter matrix, and eventually makes regeneration impossible. The key to DPF longevity isn't preventing regeneration. It's ensuring regeneration happens efficiently and completely while minimizing the amount of soot that needs to be burned off in the first place. Here are the specific practices that will double your DPF's lifespan. Practice number one, change your driving habits to support natural regeneration. If you do mostly short trips, stop and go traffic, or city driving where your engine never reaches optimal operating temperature, you're killing your DPF. Your engine needs sustained high temperatures and steady exhaust flow for complete regeneration. The common recommendation is driving at steady speeds above 40 miles per hour for 20 to 30 minutes. That's not enough. For complete regeneration, you need at least one hour of steady highway driving per week with your engine at full operating temperature. Schedule this driving deliberately. Don't wait for the DPF warning light. By then, the filter is already heavily loaded and regeneration becomes less efficient, leaving more ash behind. During these highway sessions, don't baby your engine. Let it work in its power band between 2000 and 3000 RPM. This ensures optimal exhaust temperatures and flow rates for thorough regeneration. Practice number two, use low ash engine oil and change it frequently. Your engine oil directly impacts DPF life through ash production. Standard oils contain metallic additives that create ash during combustion. This ash accumulates in your DPF and accelerates its death. Always use low SAPS oil that meets your manufacturer's specifications. SAPS stands for sulfated ash, phosphorus, and sulfur. Low SAPS oils produce significantly less ash during combustion, extending DPF life. Change your oil every 6,000 to 8,000 miles instead of following extended manufacturer intervals. Degraded oil produces more soot during combustion, which means more frequent regeneration cycles and faster ash accumulation. Oil dilution from failed regeneration attempts also contaminates your oil with unburned fuel. Fresh oil prevents this contamination from circulating through your engine and creating additional problems. Practice number three, address technical problems immediately. DPF failure is almost never caused by the DPF itself. It's a symptom of other engine problems that affect combustion efficiency or regeneration ability. Faulty fuel injectors create incomplete combustion and excessive soot production. Clogged EGR systems prevent proper regeneration. Air leaks in the intake system affect the air-fuel mixture and increase soot formation. Oil consumption problems are particularly destructive. If your engine burns oil, that oil ends up in the DPF as ash that can never be removed. Fix oil leaks, worn valve guides, or any other source of oil consumption immediately. Sensor failures that prevent or interrupt regeneration cycles are equally damaging. DPF pressure sensors, exhaust temperature sensors, and mass airflow sensors all play critical roles in regeneration control. When these fail, regeneration becomes incomplete or impossible. The key principle is this. Anything that makes your engine run inefficiently creates more soot, 
which requires more frequent regeneration, which creates more ash buildup and shortens DPF life. Practice number four, avoid modifications that increase soot production. Cheap tuning boxes and aggressive ECU remaps often dump excessive fuel into combustion chambers to create more power. This excess fuel doesn't burn completely, creating massive amounts of soot that overwhelm your DPF. If you want more power, invest in quality tuning that maintains proper air-fuel ratios. Professional tuners understand how to increase power without destroying your DPF. Avoid fuel additives and oil treatments that aren't specifically designed for DPF-equipped engines. Many additives contain metallic compounds that increase ash production and accelerate DPF death. Even performance air filters can cause problems if they allow more debris into the engine or affect mass airflow sensor readings. Any modification that changes combustion characteristics will impact DPF life. Practice number five, use quality fuel and maintain your fuel system. Poor quality diesel fuel with high sulfur content or contamination creates more soot during combustion. This forces more frequent regeneration cycles and accelerates ash accumulation. Use fuel from reputable stations with good turnover rates. Avoid fuel that's been sitting in tanks for extended periods or show signs of contamination. Keep your fuel filters fresh and your fuel system clean. Clogged fuel filters restrict fuel flow and create poor combustion. Dirty injectors produce uneven spray patterns that increase soot formation. Consider using diesel fuel system cleaners designed for DPF equipped engines. These help maintain proper injector function and combustion efficiency. Practice number six, don't interrupt regeneration cycles. When your DPF starts a regeneration cycle, let it complete the process. Interrupting regeneration by shutting off the engine or switching to stop and go driving prevents complete soot burnoff and leaves more ash residue. Learn to recognize when regeneration is occurring. You might notice higher idle speeds, increased fan operation, or a distinctive smell from the exhaust. During active regeneration, plan your driving to maintain steady speeds and loads. If you must stop during regeneration, restart as soon as possible and continue driving under conditions that allow the cycle to complete. Incomplete regeneration attempts are worse than no regeneration at all. Here's the bottom line about DPF longevity. Your DPF is designed to last 150,000 to 200,000 miles under ideal conditions. Most fail much sooner because they're operated under conditions that accelerate ash accumulation and prevent proper regeneration. The practices I've outlined work because they address the root causes of DPF failure, excessive soot production, incomplete regeneration, and accelerated ash formation. By supporting natural regeneration, using low ash consumables, maintaining combustion efficiency, and avoiding modifications that create problems, you can easily double your DPF's lifespan. This isn't just about saving money on DPF replacement. Though that $3,000 to $5,000 savings is significant, it's about understanding that your DPF is part of a complex system that requires proper operation to function as designed. These practices also improve your overall diesel performance, fuel economy, and reliability. An efficiently operating diesel with a healthy DPF runs cleaner, stronger, and more economically than one with emission system problems. Your DPF doesn't fail because it's a bad design. It fails because it's not given the operating conditions it needs to function properly. Give it those conditions consistently and it will serve you reliably for hundreds of thousands of miles. What's your experience with DPF problems? Have you implemented any of these practices and seen improvements? Share your results in the comments and help other diesel owners avoid expensive DPF replacements. If these practices gave you new insights into DPF maintenance, hit that like button and subscribe for more diesel system advice that actually works. Thanks for watching.